creative blocks. We've all been there. Um, the moment where you just don't know what to do. You don't know how to carry on. You feel like your inspiration has dried up. Uh, you start to doubt yourself. Uh, it feels awful. And it's the sort of thing that is so incredibly common. Um, I've written uh, over 500 music tracks that I have in our music production libraries at the moment. So to a certain extent, I work with creative block all the time or overcoming creative block all the time. Um, in the, the, uh, the Art of War, I think it is, by Stephen Covey, he says that um, uh, creating something is, is a constant battle against procrastination, which I can completely get. Um, and I procrastinate and I get it wrong and I get creative block and all sorts of things. But with my little experience, I've got um, a few tips here. I've got five really powerful tips that I want to hand on that will hopefully help you um, if you feel that you're experiencing a creative block or are stuck at the moment. So the first thing is not to actually wait for inspiration to strike um, a thunderbolt from the clouds. It uh, very rarely happens like that in my experience anyway. Of course it does sometimes, but more often than not, uh, it really doesn't. And waiting for inspiration to strike and uh, waiting for that elusive magical moment, really probably in all reality, most of us aren't going to get much done. Um, I'm really lucky in that I can uh, set aside um, some time every morning to write uh, to be creative. I do that every morning and I find that um, my brain is sort of conditioned to walking the dog, having breakfast, sitting down and doing, being creative. And actually I find that whether I like it or not, I, I feel creative at that time. I've sort of conditioned myself to do that. Um, I think it was Tchaikovsky, a very, very famous romantic composer, said something about um, inspiration not visiting the lazy or something like that or something about sitting down at the piano at nine o'clock in the morning and there, lo and behold, inspire, inspiration was there. But there's something about showing up, even if you sit and you don't do something and you tick the box because you've actually been there and you've been in your creative space for an hour, you know, and making that the criteria rather than, you know, creating a whole thing. Um, and just really, really taking the pressure off yourself can be really helpful. Um, similarly, uh, thinking of oneself as a, artist artist i think can be quite difficult i found um there's some building work going on over opposite our house at the moment here some uh, somebody having an extension done and the builders are there hammering away at 8 30 every single morning laying bricks etc 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 and i bet they're not waiting to be inspired to do brick laying i'm not saying this is a creative we um are brick layers but i think if we see ourselves as being craftsmen as the builders are rather than artists, a craftsman, a craftsman fashions and works and works with the moment, I think, rather than, I think to me, at least the, the word artiste means that you sort of wait for inspiration and are of another worldly sort of creative, um, have another worldly creative aura or something. Um, so I think that can be quite helpful as well. My second tip is to plan, 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 plan. There's nothing more terrifying than a blank canvas or a blank screen or a blank piece of paper. Um, just just don't. It's an inspiration killer just to sit there with, okay, I'm going to write a piece of music, I'm going to write an essay, I'm going to create a painting, whatever you're going to do. Um, there has to be some context, there has to be a starting point. So I find personally that collecting um, uh, a selection of instruments that I'm going to use, so I know the sort of sound that I'm going to start off with works really, really well. Um, it might be that I listen through, I listen to um, music that's similar or in a similar sort of mood or style to what I'm about to create to get some ideas. Create a sort of visual mood board if that's, that works for you. Um, gather materials, gather odds and ends. The other thing also is to, is to absolutely not start at the beginning and try to work your way through to the end. I think that's really, really difficult. Um, or perfecting the beginning and working your way through the end if you're creating something linear. It's much, much better just to just to pick off little bits and just write little bits that that work or fit the, the style of what you're doing and then and then they will sort of that tapestry will sort of start to gradually unfold or gradually sort of come together. Um, almost a little, I always think it's a little bit like trying to find something in the fog. Um, it gradually becomes clearer over time, but you go just get sort of vague shapes and vague sort of inklings of what's there for a start. A written plan can be a really good idea, though I don't personally find that works well, depending on what you're creating, but definitely 
having some parameters there so you don't just have that massive blank piece of paper um, and having some guidelines for yourself in place. In many ways, the more um, restrictive you are, sometimes the more inspiring that can be. The, the realms of like infinite possibility can be a bit of an inspiration killer because you, you, you've just got too many things to contemplate, too many things to, to struggle with. So reducing yourself down or confining yourself to using one particular material can often work really, really well for inspiring creative work. For me personally, I think I have a bit of a short attention span. Um, I find that um, working for maybe 50 minutes maximum on one particular track or one particular piece of music is enough. For me, uh, I rarely work on a track for more than that. I do find that if I just keep going at it, particularly if I don't have breaks, the sort of amount of uh, time I put in, it has diminishing returns in terms of my creativity. My, my goal is to, to get into my flow state really, really quickly, work for an intense 40 or 50 minutes or so. Usually by that time, I'm sort of starting to ebb a little bit and then I'll have a, a quick break and then open another track and start on another track afresh. So I find personally that I do my best work on a track uh, when I've come to it fresh. So I, th I have three or four tracks going on at the same time or, or in my workflow at the same time. So in a morning, I would work on three or four tracks, maybe for an hour each or something like that, uh, rather than one track for three or four hours. And I find that way I'm much less likely to get stuck. Um, the other thing I do also is that if I realise I'm slowing down or running out of ideas, which happens very, very frequently, uh, without sort of judgment and without oh, going, oh, Andrew, you're so rubbish, I, I just, just close down what I've done and just move on to something else. And it's very often that it's not that I'm out of ideas, it's not that I'm not creative or I'm too tired or can't be bothered, it's just that that particular track at that time has fulfilled everything I can do on it. And I usually find that if I move on to something else, I can work on that quite fluently and quite easily. So I think having more than one project at a time, swapping between projects is really, really good. As soon as you feel your inspiration or your energy failing or slowing, I, I would swap over, try, try working on something else. It's quite a well-known fact that we all have um, this little voice in the back of our head, our editor or our biggest critic, um, and um, for me, I, I always think of my creator brain and my editor brain sort of working in together to, to create something, to create music. Um, where things don't go particularly well is where my editing brain and my creating brain are, are trying to work at the same time. This takes quite a lot of practice and you, you learn to listen and to recognise and to hear it, but you need to boot that editor out of the room when you're creating. Um, and you need to work in two sort of separate ways, if that makes sense. So when, when creating, I mean, you're, everybody's familiar with this, you'll create, write, write something, in my case music, you write, write some music or you write something or you paint something, you draw something, you write a paragraph, you read it back and you go, oh, that's a load of old rubbish. And you, you scrap it and you move on to something and you try something else and go, oh, no, 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 that's not good enough. You scrap it, move on to something else. No, it's really not good, it's not, you know. Um, that's soul destroying, soul destroying, soul destroying. And um, a much better way of doing it, or a much more fruitful way of doing it, in my experience, is to completely shut down that editing um, voice in your head and just create without judgment. So create without making any judgment, without making any judgments of quality is what I'm trying to say. This is good. It isn't good. It's what it's supposed to be or not. And you create, 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 and you're and you're fluent in your creation because you're bearing no attention whatsoever to the quality. The key then is to go back, preferably the next day, with your editor hat on, and to read through, to look at, to listen through what you created, and then to start to edit and work out. Well, okay, this wasn't so good. This was great. This wasn't good. And and you may be very surprised that. Um, you will, uh, you, you, things that you may not have thought were that great originally <laughs> turn out to be okay is the first thing, even though you weren't thinking about it. But it's, you, you'll have created a huge amount more material that way by just separating out those two processes. So try and separate out the uh, creative process and the editing process and switch that editing voice off in your mind when you are creating and see if that sort of pushes you ahead in your, in your creati creativity further. 
And finally, when the uh, finally when the rubber rubber really hits the road, and you are utterly stuck, and you really are banging your head against a brick wall, and you've tried everything you can think about, the worst and most soul destroying thing is to keep on trying to sort it out, trying to work on what you're doing. Uh, my best advice is to get out of the room and to get outside, not even in another part of the house, but to go outside and do something physical. Go for a cycle ride, go for a walk, go for a run, get some fresh air, get some exercise, do something that totally takes your mind off. Um, interestingly, and it's a well-known fact, um, create your, your brain still keeps working sort of subconsciously in the background often. I, f I weirdly find that uh, I can sometimes, without even trying, sort out musical problems in the shower, which is a weird thing. Uh, and weirdly, I definitely sort out musical problems or have musical ideas, not in my sleep, but if I am if I wake up in the night, or yeah, sometimes I do wake up in the morning having sorted something out. The subconscious is a weird thing, and I and I've been really surprised by that over the few the, the last few years that I've been doing this. But but once the, the subconscious mind does carry on working, and it will work in the strangest of places that are totally not related to your work or creative environment. So don't think that going for a walk or going for a run is a waste of time. It, you, your brain may well still be ticking over. You might find that straight away you come back to it, and it's and it's absolutely fine. Um, uh, watching TV can be really, really good. Uh, good. Chatting to friends and family, you know, getting getting out of your head, anything that takes you out of the out of your head. Listening to music, whatever it is that takes you out of your head, so you can come back to that creative space and be fresh and creative and productive again. So I hope that's been really helpful. Um, I'm going to finish this video now. My dog needs taking for a walk, as you can tell. She's uh, she's been here around my feet while I've been doing this, uh, making sure I know that she's still here. Um, how how do you overcome a creative block? What what have you anything that you can add to this? Um, I'd love to hear in the comments. Please do comment, uh, like, and subscribe. Until the next video. Thanks. Bye bye.